In late 2019, historian and New Aberdeen researcher Sandra Kingsley proposed one potential solution to the mysteries of the city. Inspired by a then-current expedition to Scotland's Loch Ness, she proposed that the burgeoning field of environmental DNA analysis might be implemented to the quarantine city. Since access to soil and water from within the Q zone could not be obtained, Kingsley's alternative was to take samples from the surrounding area and any bodies of water connected to Lake Orr. Her primary objective was determining the presence of Orion. As she stated in an interview, it's like the search for alien life. Whether we find anything or not, the discovery is still significant. If we don't find any DNA evidence of a large reptile in the area, that casts doubt on the story surrounding New Aberdeen. If, on the other hand, we do find that DNA, then the stories have something to back them up. Either way, I believe Orion is the key to solving this riddle. When the results of the eDNA tests were announced in early 2020, the controversy only grew. Reptilian DNA was found in the samples, but roughly 38% of the DNA processed was labeled as unclassified, and certain varieties of fish and birds considered native to the region did not register at all. In addition, the reptilian DNA could not be properly categorized. Naturally, this has sparked intense debate about how the results were attained. Some claim the DNA had deteriorated over time, while others question Kingsley's qualifications and methods. A few fringe groups remain skeptical of eDNA testing as a viable science in the first place. To date, requests to gather more samples for testing have been denied. The following tape appears to have been broadcast in the immediate aftermath of the previous tape. It appears that only a few hours have passed between them. All right, and that'll have to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Victor Jones. I don't know if anyone is listening right now, but if you are, that means you made it through. I suppose I ought to fill you in on what happened since the last broadcast was dropped. The Valorum skyscraper has collapsed. A series of explosions at the base caused it to topple towards Orion, who happened to be near the radio station at the time. The collapse and subsequent collision with the station's facade cut our transmission short. Hope G and I were on the roof at the time. Fortunately, we both made it out safely. We each got a few scrapes on the way down, but we're alive, and that's what counts. I'm back in the studio, which now has an unobstructed view of the city thanks to the collapse. My crew and I have been working to get our equipment up and running again for this broadcast. Hope has gone off to find Captain Joseph Blythe, but she wanted me to let you all know that she'll have a dynamite article for the evening edition. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Orion. He's still in the city, but he's calmed down considerably now. The Valorum skyscraper landed just shy of where the Enigma stopped the monster, though I still don't know how he stopped him, and he's been feasting on the ruins since then. Goldstein was right. That's exactly what he came here for. It's keeping him docile for now, but God only knows how long that'll last. Once he's had his fill of that new element, will he start his rampage again? We'll just have to wait and see. This little respite has brought a few updates with it. Recovery teams have been at the new Aberdeen Concert Hall ever since Orion settled, working non-stop to pull survivors from the wreckage. It's slow going, folks, and I'm sorry to say that there were fatalities, just as there were all across town. But there are plenty of survivors, too. Fans will be happy to know that Bernie Baxter is okay, though we're still waiting for a headcount on his band. The Gibson sisters also seem to have made it, but Patricia Hella hasn't been found yet. We can only hope she made it out somehow. The poor kid needs a break after all. As for the rest of the city, we're still waiting for a final death toll. Orion was pretty determined to reach the Valorum skyscraper, and thanks to some gas bombs planted by the vigilante smoke, he kept on a fairly straight path. Most of the damage to other regions of town were the result of the Sky Patrol zeppelins going down. I'd hazard to guess that anything in Orion's way when he made landfall was destroyed as well. What I'm trying to say, folks, is that this could have been worse, and when Orion decides he's had enough air and goes back to Lake Orr, 
We'll only have a little bit to rebuild. Huh, I just got a signal from my crew that we can play music again. Just for old time's sake, we'll take a break and send you a classical number. Updates will resume afterward. Welcome back, folks. Not much has changed outside the studio. Orion is still feasting, and we're still keeping an eye on him. Now, who could that be? Somebody get that, would ya? See? Nobody's there! The door's still opened! It's the darndest thing! You don't suppose he does have a crew after all, do you? Hmm. Wouldn't be the strangest thing either of us has seen. Well, how's this for a surprise? Hope and Captain Blythe have stopped by the studio. What's the occasion, you two? I have something important to tell you, Vic. Hmm, yes. So important that he couldn't just wait to give me the exclusive. I'm sorry, honey, but this really can't wait for the papers. Well, don't beat around the bush. What's this big news you're interested in to New Aberdeen's top news hound? The things I'd say to you if we weren't live right now. But I'll restrain myself. I'm a professional. I was down at the concert hall helping to look for survivors earlier. That's the kind of man he is, Vic. The kind who selflessly helps others. It's just my military instincts kicking in. Anyway, the city sent some construction equipment to help remove the rubble, and they revealed something interesting. You remember how the concert hall was destroyed because Orion threw a ship at it, but nobody knew what kind of ship it was? Yeah, I remember. Why? You're a smart guy, Vic. Why would I come here to tell you about the ship? Say, you don't mean... I do. It's a ship from the underground city. But how did Orion get his claws on it? Best guess. While they were looking for a place to surface, they accidentally overshot the city and tunneled into the lake. I had to get that news out now before somebody carts it away. But that sound of them tunneling stopped weeks ago. How long were they in the water? I don't even want to imagine that. Is anyone still inside it? When we saw it, the hatch was open. Whoever was inside isn't anymore. And it's anyone's guess where they are now, if they're still alive. Well, if Joe's right, and there really are people from the Earth's core out there now, if you want to make your presence known, you know who to call. That would be me. I've got their former house guest's ear, after all. Anyways, we really should be going. Well, anyway, thanks for the exclusive. Don't be such a stranger, Joe. And hope. Yes. I'm glad you're all right, sister. Yeah, same to you, brother. Well, that's some interesting news. I admit I still haven't seen that mystery ship myself, but if I know Hope, she's got pictures for her article. I guess we'll be able to make up our minds on that later. Ah. I've just gotten word from my trusty crew that our phone is back up and running. If any of you lovely listeners out there want to call in and share your experiences from last night, you know the number. As if on cue, here's our first caller. Hello, you're on the air with Victor Jones. It's high time you got that phone working again. I've been waiting here for hours to call you. It's rude to make a lady wait, you know. I might have known you'd be the first, Izzy. Well, you are a news program. And I have a finger on the pulse of this city. If anything, the station ought to hire me as your co-host. Even in light of all the unlikely things that have happened recently, Izzy, I can assure you Hades will freeze over before that happens. Anyway, you're on the air, so what's your spicy gossip this time? Aren't you the least bit curious about why the Valorum skyscraper collapsed the way it did? Orion well, didn't knock it over, you know. The base exploded while he was still a few blocks away. That was curious, I admit, but the solution is easy enough to guess. It was sabotage. 
Some radical who listened to Dr. Goldstein's warning snuck in and planted bombs in the basement. All right, Mr. Jones. You think you're so smart. Answer me this. Who could possibly get into the skyscraper and plant those bombs without anyone noticing? I don't know, but he'd have to be one stealthy hombre to pull it off. Wait just a doggone minute. You're about to tell me it was the Enigma, aren't you? Isn't it obvious? You saw him during your broadcast last night. And based on your own description, he seemed to know what would happen. Besides, I have it on good authority from my barber that her sister's husband, he's a Florian employee, you understand, that he's been approached by a stranger to do a very special job at the building. Though, he didn't say what. So there you have it. I'm afraid you'll have to fill in a few more blanks than that, Izzy. Obviously, the foreman was an inside man who aided the Enigma in planting his bomb so the building would be destroyed. I don't know, Izzy. I think I'd need to get that from the Enigma himself before I took that to the bank. Believe me or don't, Victor Jones, I trust my sources. I suppose it's anyone's guess at this point. Anything else you want to share? Well, the other day, Francie McDonald... I should specify anything that has to do with Orion. Didn't think so. Goodbye. I swear, five minutes of listening to her and Alexander Graham Bell would have burned his blueprints and gone into agriculture. Sounds like Orion agrees with me. It's funny, but I'm getting used to him being out there. Hey, pal. Feel like another song? I knew you would. Boys, give us a tune. And we're back. As I sit here watching Orion outside my studio's brand new picture window, I find myself kind of relieved that the Sky Patrol didn't kill him. My heart goes out to the poor souls who no doubt lost their lives last night, but when you get right down to it, Orion didn't kill them. They died the moment Hugh Valorum commissioned Cobalt Labs to start mining Lake Ore. He might be the biggest lug in town, but Orion's no monster. He had every right to come ashore and reclaim what was his to begin with. If you ask me, the real monsters ought to be held accountable for what they did. I couldn't agree more. That's right. Wait, what? How do you do, Victor Jones? The Enigma. My word, it's really you. It is. And if you'll permit me, I am here to set the record straight on certain things. Uh, well, uh, yes, please. Go ahead. What do you have to say? A few moments ago, you broadcast a claim that I planted bombs in the Valorum skyscraper. This accusation is only partially true. There were bombs in the structure's basement. I did not plant them. But I did make use of them. The bombs were planted by men working for Don Luigi Magliori two months ago. Magliori was using the explosives as leverage to extort Valorum for access to the new element. The building was a symbol of his ego, after all, which made it the perfect hostage. So they found a way to get the stuff after all. But why didn't Valorum call the cops? Valorum has many reasons to keep his distance from the police, but they shall be revealed in due time. Last night I triggered the explosives, and in doing so, I ended Orion's rampage and freed Hugh Valorum from blackmail, if he is smart enough to seize the opportunity. Mighty decent of ya. But hey, ain't you taking a risk babbling all of this on live radio? Perhaps. But perhaps I have a reason to reveal what I have done. Shoot. Don't go anywhere, alright? This might be an adoring fan. Hello, you're on the air with Victor- Spare me the pleasantries, Jones. I demand to speak to the Enigma. What did I tell ya? A fan. Up for a call? If the Commissioner wishes to speak with me, I shall oblige him. You may speak, Commissioner Oddsworth. Your permission is unnecessary. I hope you realize, Enigma, that you have publicly confessed to several illegal activities just now on Mr. Jones's program. 
That is all a matter of perspective, Commissioner. The only perspective that matters is the law. And if you truly consider yourself a virtuous figure, then your next stop after leaving that studio will be the police station to turn yourself in. I'm afraid that would interfere with my work, sir. So I must decline. Then you leave me no choice but to make you a public enemy. If you didn't have Orion to hide behind, I would have sent my men to arrest you the moment I heard your voice. So, you learn from your mistakes, and are unwilling to needlessly risk your men's lives. You are a good man after all, Frank Odsworth. I shall remember that. What I suggest you remember is that I gave you a chance to do the right thing, and you refused. What comes next is on your head. You know, he always seems to get into disagreements with my guests. You don't seem too worried about it, though. I am not. He shall come around when the time is right. If you say so. If I can ask one last question, what was going on between you and Orion before the bombs went off? It sure looked to us like you were communicating with him, but that's ridiculous. Is it? Come on, quit pulling my leg. Orion's just a dumb animal, isn't he? What's the real dope? As the Bard once said, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Now, if you will excuse me. Now come on, you can't ex- Please answer. There must be someone. Leave that. What? Where'd he- Fellas, did you see where he went? Well, that's not helpful. Hey, it looks like Orion finished his dinner. He's standing now. Hey, he's rearing up on his hind legs. Jeepers, he's even bigger when he's standing like a person. Looks like he's turning around now. He's back on all fours. Well, folks, it looks like Orion's had enough of this city and is heading back home. From the look of it, he's heading back the way he came, so there shouldn't be any new damage unless someone distracts him. For goodness sake, nobody distract him. Yep, there he goes, back towards Lake Orr. Fare thee well, Orion, until your next visit. I guess that's the end of that. From the look of it, there's still plenty of wreckage from the Valorum skyscraper down in the street, so I recommend that any of it containing the new element be dumped into Lake Orr as soon as possible. Heaven knows it could wind up in worse hands. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've had enough excitement for now. I'm getting out of here. Next stop, home to hit the sack and sleep until Friday. I think we can all use a little rest after a night like this. I'll leave you with a little number to fill the gap until the next program begins. Until next time, I'm Victor Jones. Take care of yourselves. Somebody please answer me! Not my ship, I can't get- The New Aberdeen Tapes, Episode 8, Recovery Written by Ryan George Collins. Starring, in order of appearance, Ryan Collins as Victor Jones. Pink Bunny Girl 43 as Hope G. The Second Opinion as Captain Joseph Blythe. Midnight 29 as Isidore Fuller. Sean Hastings as The Enigma. Rodney Woodworth as Commissioner Frank Odsworth. Featuring the following music in order of appearance. Hungarian Rhapsody by Franz Liszt. Three Wise People by Ease Jammy Jams. And Pastoral by Joel Cummins. Thank you for listening, and good night.